Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel. And Imperator Rome here with Sparta. The year is 474. Just kind of a little update. And before we get into today's episode, as always, thank you for all likes, etc., etc. I want to give a special shout out to Grim327. He is the latest Patreon supporter, and he is actually at the Heroes of the Realm tier and a support. And of course, Grim, we will get you into the game. It's the next male heir-ish of the family. The next next male born. You will be part of this. And I uh, haven't quite decided which name I shall give you, but we will uh, we will talk about that at that time. Then we have another uh, viewer piece of history coming in, uh, this time again from Spartan of Time. So this is going back a little bit in time, a few years. It is June 4th, 467. A Macedonian general laments on the current situation of his nation. This is actually, you know, really good timing because we're going to talk about Macedon here. General, this is the most up-to-date map we have. Guard, yes sir. General, look at this fine mess. From the greatest empire Greece has ever known to a stepping stone stuck between the Antigonids and the barbarous Thracians. Our very home Thessaloniki has fallen to the pretenders and any further taunt, and they further, that's actually how you read, taunt us by letting us exist as a buffer from the Thracians. Guard, would you like a moment to yourself, sir? General, I would much appreciate it. The guard leaves. Inspecting the map further, he thinks to himself, we hold on to what little power we have left, not because of our might, but by the mercy of others. The city-states of Lower Greece put themselves under our protection, but in truth, I doubt we could protect them. It might be just our name that keeps the vultures at bay. Like the Spartans, the untrained eye might see them as throwing their army around carelessly to warmonger. But I see the meaning behind every movement. The invasion of Amphissa is but another piece of their plan. They have strategy and well thought out planning behind every conquest, and they know where to put troops when the time is right. It may only be a matter of time before they realize we are not as powerful as we once were, especially with the Thracian allies at our borders ready to tie up our troops as they hound down our protectorates. Indeed, what a fine mess. The guard re enters the tent. Guard, sir, the scouts have returned. They have word of Thracian troop movements, General. Then let us meet them. Both exit the tent. So thank you again, Spartan of Time, for this uh, great entry. Now, you wrote that a few episodes ago, and I had kind of put it on the back burner because we will focus a little bit on Macedon and future conquests in today's episode. But for that, we do have a little bit of housekeeping to do internally coming off of, obviously the conquests of Rhodes and Crete from the last episode. First, we shall go to Rhodes. Now, in Rhodes, uh, I didn't spend enough time on... Uh, we also have here a statue of Ptolemaire, uh, which gives us a nice little 10% local citizen happiness boost. The Great Wonder, the Acropolis of Rhodes. What does it actually give us? Naval Traditions 4. So this gives us a Navy attrition of minus 20% for Sparta, a blockade efficiency of plus 20%, and a monthly ship repair at sea at plus 0.2. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. It's really nice. Uh, we also produce glass here, wine, of course, and then we have fish. So, I had, in the last one, put in Leona uh, Leonatos Peneid as governor because we wanted to placate the Peneids. Well, the problem is um, he's not actually really that good at being a governor. Uh, he's, his statesmanship is 11.6%. That's, yeah, okay, fine. But the main thing is his finesse isn't great. So I think it's time to look at this and find a new governor. Now there are a few people we could choose from. Uh, one would be, hmm, let's see here, generous, which this makes him makes everybody happy, but he cuts the holdings income by 25%. So instead, I'm looking down here in one of our sons, Davidos 
Aegead. Now, he also only has 14 statesmanship, but it's going up bit by bit by bit. Um, it changes very little, but that's based on his finesse, and that's really what we want to focus on. His finesse of seven. Now, again, he's cautious, fine, infection, depressed, and frail, so we don't know how, how strong he really will be. But we have a problem here in Rhodes, and that is province loyalty. It is changing by 0 0.1 every month. And that is mainly down to, well, they just don't really like us. They, they like to be a little independent. And part of the problem is our weaker governor. So if by changing the governor to... Where'd he go? Where is he? Where's our son? There. Davidos Agia. Now, of course, we've ticked off the Scorn family. This uh, governor corruption, this will change here in the next month. It'll it'll show it. So that'll bump up. The other thing we have is the governor policy, acquisition of wealth. We're going to go with harsh treatment. So the provincial loyalty goes up by 0.24. Now, the population output goes down 32%. Migration attraction goes down by 4.8. But uh, we need to get that loyalty bumped up. So we're going to do that for right now. Uh, so we're slowly getting there. Uh, so our, our overall, it'll go up over time. The other things we can do, of course, I can get rid of the fort and we can add uh, the court of law. That will help with provincial loyalty as well. The other one is, of course, the Great Temple helps there as well. But uh, for right now, I think we will get rid of the fortress. And then we will add the Court of Law. It costs 150 in gold. But we're going to do that because it gives us higher civilization levels, citizen happiness, citizen desired ratio, and provincial loyalty goes up as well. Perfect. Uh, I'm trying to see here if this... Technically, the governor corruption is the issue. Oh, I didn't pay attention to that. So, I'm sorry, Davidos. We're going to have to go back on our word and find somebody else who's not that corrupt. See, he's unnoticeable. Attraction is air, great wonder construction, province commerce goes down. Then we have a founder. Attraction is air, local citizen build cost... Statesmanship is high, no corruption, and that is Orestes. He's also frail, he's a founder, he's aggressive and narrow-minded. So, I was going to do Davidos, but I'm sorry, we're going to have to go with the founder here in Orestes. Uh, and we're going to have to change that governor policy again to harsh treatment. And that should help. Governor corruption, plus zero changes okay so his corruption isn't that high but his finesse is high enough that it helps we'll just kind of tick it forward and see if need be i'll just change the governor again the other thing we will do if we look at our tech tree now we are close to getting another invention or innovation in the civics advances uh, was it civics or oratory or religious Religious. There we go. So if we go into planning mode, click on reduce governorship. So the first one here is the FUG. So integrated culture happiness goes up by 2%. But here's the one here, reduce governorship. So the province loyalty goes up by 0 0.02. So that's the other thing that we will have to do. As we are conquering outside, that is something we're going to have to focus on. Now the next thing we're going to have to deal with is Knossos. Knossos doesn't really like us, obviously. We kind of beat them. Uh, subjected to Casaspella, aggressive expansion, recently declared a war, which obviously doesn't help, and different culture. Loyalty is down because of, well, yeah, aggressive expansion and power relative to Overlord, etc., etc. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to spend six gold and send them a gift straight off the bat. So that will start helping there. And then once we can, here on the 1st of December, we're going to start improving opinion with them as well. 
So that will slowly but surely make it better. You know, if we have a positive opinion from them, uh, that will help with the opinion. Obviously, the power relative to Overlord, well, that's not really going to change much at this point, but so be it. So we will uh, do that once it is the 1st of December. Now, the other thing is our general situation. Now, one thing you'll notice, Macadon is in a world of hurt from the Antigonids. So that means their feudatories or protectorates are very vulnerable. And one of the prized possessions is Athens itself. Now, this won't be an easy one. But they have no other allies. There are no defensive leagues. They're at war right now with everybody associated with the Antigonids. This is one that we want. Uh, so here we're going to go to Covert. We're going to fabricate a claim. Right there. So we're going to go after Athens as our next major port of conquest. The other one we're going to take a look at here is Akarnania over here on this north side, just south of Epirus. Now, we could also fabricate a claim here. We have enough political influence, so we will do that as well for Aetolia. So that gives us a claim here eventually. These are the feudatories of Macedon that we just need to keep an eye on. So, now let's move forward a little bit. All right, we have a call to arms by Lycia against the Lycian revolt. We'll accept that. Uh, ask for military access by Ellis. We will accept that offer. So now we have to go back into our economy and bump up our maintenance. Uh, where is that Lycian revolt? Where are they dealing with it? Uh, Lycaean Revolt. Oh, down here. Oh, well, that'll be a, an easier war to deal with. So what we'll take our powerful navy. And we will get rid of that. Move them into the harbor here. And we will... Uh, let's raise... Actually, you know what we could do? What if we just raise the levy over here? It's just 2,000 men. And this, we can put the light infantry here. Now we have cavalry. And we can start moving in there if we wanted to. But first things first, we will raise... We may as well raise the levies here as well. Uh, and just gain that military experience. Here again, heavy infantry the front line and then light infantry on the flanks and once our ships are in position and we get loaded we will head on over to Rhodes and pick up our other army there we will then combine them or I don't know if we can actually combine them but we will move into battle together and help our ally the other thing we can of course do right now is Improve, start improving our relations. Broke their alliance with us. Oh, so Thrace has broken their alliance. All right, but we will improve our opinion with Knossos. Start that process. Now we can start also looking for another ally as we move forward. But first things first, we will deal with this war here. All right, so we have landed now in Anatolia. Um, and we will move forward and help our allies in this conquest. Hopefully that won't take very long. We've got a disloyal character, Climutris Aegeid. Hmm. See, we have to pay him a hundred of our own money really want to do that. I don't even know. What is our current? We've got 900 gold. So if I bribe him, we gain slight corruption of one. Oh, 
petition. The wealthier residents of Rhodos have sent a formal petition on behalf of the entire province complaining about the harsh ways of their governor, Orestes Chericlid. It seems that his taxation policy is causing quite a furor amongst landowners who are having to work their slaves to the bone in order to meet tax quotas. It is certainly unusual for our subjects to complain in such a manner. Perhaps we ought to consider their arguments carefully. Nonsense, Arrest is doing a fine job. So he gains loyalty. Uh, the population happiness goes down. And we gain corruption. Send a representative to ensure rules are being followed. So what does that do? So we gain five. Arius gains five popularity. Orestes loses ten loyalty. He loses eight gold and gains ten corruption. Remove the miser. Uh, so he loses a lot of loyalty. We gain tyranny. Uh, we will send a representative. I think that makes the most sense. We are going to bribe him with our own money. Sad news, Philarcos has died at 75. That's sad. So now we need a new researcher in civics. Uh, he's pretty corrupt. I don't like that. Tech speed, research points. Yes, Patroclus. We will put you in charge of that. Who else is disloyal? He's still disloyal? Well, so be it. We have an invention. Now, we already spoke about this last time, so we are going to go here. If I can. Oh, first we need to do due process. Sorry. For some reason, I thought we had already done that. So then we can slowly work our way down there. That's just something we're going to have to do as we grow as a nation. Mm, let's see. Let the men roam freely. Very nice. So they have reconquered that. Now we will take that army and join up with them. Move over here into this battle. Hopefully get there in time to make a difference. And we do. So that, that war will be won, or that battle will be won. I keep calling battles wars, I've noticed. But uh, you know what I mean. At least I know what I mean. There's another quick little battle, and that is the end of the revolt. The Lycian Civil War has ended. Now we can disband all of our levies. And our Nautican can go back to destroying pirates. Perfect. All right, so we helped them. And now, let's hit pause on this real quick. Let's see, we're still, we are four, 1st of June, so almost a year away. We've got Acropolis and Rhodes, Great Wonder, listed here. How are we looking? It's, it's moving along nicely. But now we need to look for a new ally. Now that Thrace is no longer an ally and doesn't want to be an ally anymore, which does concern me a little bit, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, the Antigonids, they do not want to be an ally. What about Epirus? Epirus would be an ally. Now, we're, I'm not planning on major oceanic conquests at this point anymore. Uh, Boetia, they don't like us. Boetoia, I don't know how to pronounce that. Epirus. Epirus makes sense. Now, historically, Sparta and Epirus were not necessarily BFFs. But, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're moving beyond history at this point. The Seleucids, unfortunately, are still too far away from us. Uh, Rome doesn't like us enough. So Epirus, as a regional power, makes the most sense. Uh, they could also help us conquer this area down here. They've got trade agreements with Thrace, the Antigonids, and Rome. Let's just offer that alliance... And now we are close with Epirus. It's a shame to lose Thrace, but they did help us in the wars here, uh, specifically down in Crete. They helped a lot. So adding them at the time was worth it. Now they're going to deal with their own stuff. Uh, I mean, look at that expansion up here. So they're going to look at moving up north, gobbling all of this stuff up. Armenia has grown a lot. The Seleucids, they're, they're looking on a crash course with Moria. Right now, they only share that. 
uh, border there. Carthage is still looking strong. Arvernia has grown a lot here in central Gaul. And then, of course, Rome has basically taken Italy at this point. I mean, they're very close to the end there uh, when it comes to the dominance of Italy. All right, we have an omen we can pick. Um, Helios... Askepelios is a Hellenic deity. And then we have Helios. What if we change somebody here? Helen... Hyakinthos... Apollo and Athena. What if we change Helen? And... Uh, it doesn't look like we can pick anybody. It's a holy site in Ephesus. I Okay, what about Hyakinthos? Here, this is who we could change them to. That would give us national noble happiness grows up, civ change goes up, and civilization change goes up as well. And he, so we've got both Asclepios and Helios we could bring in there. Integrated culture happiness goes up. Monthly ruler popularity gain goes up. I would say Asclepios makes the most sense. This will cost us 15 in stability. But it would really help. Our national noble happiness would go up. Do we want to risk hurting this by 15? That brings it down to 42, so it'll then pop back up. I think at this point, I don't really want to. So we're just going to call on Apollo and boost our income. So we have invoked the Apollo Carne uh, Carneos and succeeded. This grants us national commerce income of 14.22%. Now let's go back to economy and turn down all of our maintenance. And as you can see, we've got a nice little balance starting to bump up here. Now we don't want to drop our subject's opinion we can drop the tribute income and help their opinion of us. Or we just leave it as is. So if we drop this by 33%, so a third of that would be, what, 20? 0.2? And we could afford to do that and help their opinion of us. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with that uh, income reduction. For right now, if we bump it back up, that has no effect. But we need we need that opinion to go up from, from Knosso. See, there you go. Now they're liking us more. Loyalty is still at zero, which isn't great. Uh, and a lot of that is the aggressive expansion, which will be ticking down bit by bit by bit. And then the power relative to Overlord is obviously an issue here as well. But... You know, we're improving relations with them. We're, we're on a good track. Uh, invite to a league the Aetolian Revolt. Now let's take a look at that. What does that do? So the Aetolian Revolt. So they have taken care of... Aetolia is just this tiny little thing here. Still a civil war. The Aetolian Revolt is looking like they will take that over. They're at war with everybody. Interesting. No, I don't want to ask for an alliance, but what I will then eventually do is... I'm not going to join a defensive league uh, with them. Instead, what I will do eventually is... That's territory to gobble up. Because now, Messenia is down one ally. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. They're down a, a normal quote-unquote normal ally. I don't know why I'm doing air quotes when I don't have a camera on, but they're down a normal ally and just part of that defensive leak at this point. So right now we're still just waiting for Athens and Acarnia to tick up. Once we get there uh, and then we have everything kind of prepped, we'll be ready to launch our campaign against... 
these boys here. But in preparation for that, actually, what we're going to do here, I'm going to split our Nauticon in half. And our first Nauticon needs a leader. Camel, cavalry, siege ability. Yeah, that doesn't really help us. We'll go with Pyrrhos. What we're going to do with these guys is they're also going to destroy pirates. Because we need a second navy to transport our troops. Because we will have troops here and we will in, in Sparta and then of course in Rhodes. So this way we have two different navies that can transport everybody up to Athens. And then we could, we could combine the navies again and have one powerful navy, um, one powerful nauticon to destroy the Athenian uh, navy, which is very important. All right. Patronage of the arts. As Basileos is a, a Basileos, better said, is expected to be a patron of the arts. Artistic depictions of the Basileos cement legitimacy in the eyes of the people, styled in the manner of popular gods and heroes. These sculptures, paintings, and murals are often worth their hefty price. All right, so we must not neglect the arts. We lose some money, legitimacy goes up, or we lose legitimacy. Yeah, we must not neglect the arts. Even though the Spartans weren't overly artsy as a people, per se. But Oh, and um, for the viewers that have been commenting about... You know, we had uh, two episodes ago a huge drop. We gained 5,000 in manpower and then lost them next month uh, one of the main things was our manpower maximum uh, that's where it kind of butted up against and that's why I went back down uh, I, I think that's a stupid mechanic I think if you just get the people it should be adjusted but it isn't and so be it so we'll just deal with it accordingly there we go we've got our Casas Belli according to what we need now let's take a quick look at Athens. So they are still part of Macedon. Now we don't have Thrace to help us, but Macedon is so, so wrapped up with the Antigonids, a war that they're looking likely to lose, actually. Uh, they're, they're not looking too healthy. Let's see, if we declare a war, nobody's gonna come to our aid. Uh, which is very annoying. Uh, let's see. War balance has border. Ellis at, is at war, lacks a border. Fighting together. Knossos, they're technically still disloyal. And the war balance. And the war balance. They want, the, Macedon is what scares them. They are scared by Macedon. So the question, of course, strategically now is, I mean, every single bit of Macedon territory is currently occupied by the Antigonids. Macedon could be wiped off the map very, very shortly. I don't think they're going to come in and help Athens. Uh, the Athenian military, I don't think will be much of an issue. Uh, we'll have about 5,000 soldiers. Plus we will have complete um, naval superiority. So that's the question. Up here, if we declare a war here, again, nobody will come because they are worried about the Macedon uh, being part of this. But Macedon only has this one little province. They'd have to sail around and deal with this. See, and this is where Thrace would have been the ideal partner to keep. Because they would have marched against Macedon. They wouldn't have cared. This wouldn't have worried them. But either way, uh, war declaration or not war declaration here, uh, that will go into the next episode. So a little bit shorter today. Uh, it was more of a strategic planning uh, development uh, politics situation. Let's let's look here real quick. So they are still they're, they're still disloyal, um, and it's that power relative situation. So we'll keep building the diplomatic uh, their opinion of us, 
if we get there and obviously that recently declared war minus 88 will go away eventually and then the loyalty will tick up and they will they will join us how's it looking over here in roads um, that's not what I wanted what I wanted was actually to just look at the province itself so it changes by zero so the governor corruption is an issue harsh treatment helps and we are still the court of law helps a little bit we could build a few other things but i want to keep i want to keep the income at this point but we're not losing um that harsh treatment is really what's helping us here governor corruption that's an issue he's highly corrupt at this point so we may have to look at replacing our governor if we do that uh, refuses to be replaced interesting I haven't seen that before but that's really a cool wrinkle in the game and adds to the roleplay so maybe here's a here's a job not a job a <laughs> job sounds horrible but here's something for you guys to think about uh, viewers we're writing all these great stories tell me the story of why Orestes Chariclid, or Chariclid, Chariclid, but Orestes, governor of Rhodes, who's who was not corrupt when we put him in, became corrupt and refuses to leave the post of Rhodes, which is obviously a great posting. Let me know in the comments. What we'll also look at in future is expanding our power in Crete. Now, Knossos will not join our war right now, but we may not need their support. We may have enough. Until next time, don't forget to leave a like uh, and let me know about our strategy here. What would you say? Do we go for Athens alone without our allies? And uh, what do you think about Thrace? What could be their plans? I'd be curious to hear the speculation about the future of Sparta moving forward in our conquest of Greece. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.